Join me in this video as I step aboard the Grand Banks 85 with an LOA of 26.58 meters and a beam of 22 feet. The GB85 has lots to offer when it comes to space and various ranges of internal configurations. This is a boat that is just as happy cruising along at over 20 knots as she is at 10 knots. Stay tuned until the end of the video because we will be looking inside the engine room, home to the twin Penta IPS drives that can propel this boat through the water at a top speed of 21 knots. Before we get started, it would mean a lot to me if you could just hit that subscribe button. Let's start our yacht tour from inside the spacious saloon. To starboard, there is a large seating area that benefits from huge windows. What a great place to sit and relax and enjoy the breathtaking scenery. Forward of the lounging area in the saloon is this dining area with enough space to seat six lucky guests. Believe it or not, the headroom in this saloon is an incredible seven feet and one inch. Moving forward, we enter the galley, which is separated from the saloon area by a bulkhead. I love the fact that the designers have built in a secondary control station where a pop-up joystick has been installed on the work surface. When you are bringing the boat alongside, you can step out of the galley door. The galley itself is really well appointed with all of the appliances you'd expect to find on a long distance explorer yacht. It is rare that you find a forward facing galley with the sort of views that you can get with this one. A perfect excuse to spend more time preparing your favourite food as you motor at speed towards your next destination. Next, let's head down into the accommodation areas. This Grand Banks 85 is the three quarter beam owner's stateroom version. So it has two twin single cabins, as well as a forward VIP stateroom. And of course, the owner's stateroom, which is found midships. The starboard twin single cabin is incredibly spacious with lots of headroom. You often find that boats with twin single cabins do not afford this part of the accommodation areas with much space, but this is not the case with the Grand Banks 85. The boat itself has a freshwater capacity of 370 gallons, which is 1400 litres. The holding tank can carry 400 litres of black water and 600 litres of grey water. I love the fact that in this cabin you also get skylights. Something that is normally reserved for much larger VIP cabins on boats of a similar size. Next, let us check out the forward stateroom. Again, there is plenty of wardrobe space in here, so your guests will not have to worry about a limited choice when it comes to deciding on what to wear. They will be able to bring a lot of their clothes with them. My regular subscribers probably already know just how much I love indirect lighting and Grand Banks have done a fantastic job with the indirect lighting around the accommodation areas on this boat. It creates a really warm and inviting atmosphere. The forward states room also has a really nice ensuite with a very high end level of detailing. Around eight years ago, the world renowned Australian ocean racing yachtsman, Mark Richards, the founder of Palm Beach Yachts, joined Grand Banks as their CEO. Since being at the helm, he has steered the ship into the 21st century, and when you walk around an 85, it really does show. As we make our way towards the owner's suite, we find the shower and toilet facilities for the second twin single cabin. As you will see in a second, the second twin single cabin on this version of the Grand Banks 85 is located next to the master cabin. This is a great setup if you have two children, like me, because you can tend to them without disturbing your other guests. Of course, if you wanted to do away with this second twin single cabin, you could instead have a full beam master cabin. What would be your preferred option and why? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, I always respond to any comments which are left with a super thanks. Finally, let's have a look around the owner's cabin. One thing that is hard to highlight in a video filmed during a boat show is the high quality of the furniture, fixtures and fittings on this boat. As well as being solidly built, the GB85 is incredibly comfortable and it does not matter where on the boat you are, it really does not feel like there is a lack of space anywhere on the boat. That feeling also extends to the crew accommodation 
which we will have a look at in more detail in a minute. But what do you think of the master cabin? Let me know in the comments below and would you go for the full B master cabin option or would you go for this one? Now that we have finished looking around the main accommodation areas, let's head up two decks to the Sky Lounge. Being mindful of the fact that there are visitors on the boat at the same time as me who want to avoid ending up on YouTube. One of the downfalls of filming on a boat as a boat show is that you have to avoid the people that are visiting the boat at the same time as you, which is understandable. As we enter the Sky Lounge, the first thing that you will notice is the serving area located to port. As well as a sink, there is also a coffee machine, which is very handy as this is where you undoubtedly spend much of your time whilst underway. On the starboard side, there is some incredibly comfortable seating and up at their helm position, there is enough space for three people along with, of course, the captain to sit back and enjoy the view. I love the helm station on this boat, in particular the three large displays and the black finish fits in really well with the woodwork. When you're at the helm on this boat, you do not have to reach very far in order to get to the boat's main controls, which is very important on a boat that has a top speed of over 20 knots. Again, the indirect lighting is used really well throughout the boat. I would love to see what the Grand Banks 85 looks like at night. I love what boat builders are doing nowadays with indirect lighting, because for me, lighting creates the ambience that really relaxes you when you're on board a boat. Meanwhile, overhead, there is a huge electric sunroof, which with the flick of a button can open up this area to the warm sunshine or clear night sky. Grab rails on the overhead also remind you that you are on an ocean crossing vessel. Stepping outside, we find ourselves in a spacious outdoor entertainment area that can be shaded from the sun's beating rays if you want it to. As this is the three quarter master version of the GB85, the tender is stowed on the swim platform rather than being stowed up here. Here we get a great view of the seating area and the sleek radar mast. Now let's head down into the crew accommodation area before checking out the engine room. Just in case you're wondering, as well as this Sky Lounge version, Grand Banks also offers a Flybridge version of the 85. If you want to find out more about that, then visit the Grand Banks website. Because this boat has IPS drives, then rather than being located right at the back of the boat, the crew accommodation on the GP85 is found further forward between the engine rooms and the owner's cabin. As we enter the crew accommodation, we find the Miele washing machine and dryer neatly tucked away under a large work table. One of the things that stood out to me when I was in the crew accommodation area was just how many portholes there were down here. Here we have one of the crew cabins, which I guess is big enough to be classed as a double cabin. Next to that, we find the shared toilet and shower facilities. It's good to see a decent sized shower rather than everything being crammed into a tiny space. Moving across, we come to the galley area, complete with a large TV recessed into the bulkhead. Next to the galley is the second crew cabin. When it comes to accommodation on boats, I know we all have different standards, really what we call comfortable, but having lived on warships for several years, this to me is incredibly comfortable. And we also have a seating area so the crew can relax during some well-deserved downtime. What do you think of the crew accommodation on the Grand Banks 85? As ever, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. By the way, I just want to say a massive thank you to the crew who are on board whilst I was filming for giving me the space to get these shots. Now that we have finished having a look around the crew accommodation, it is time to have a look inside one of the engine rooms as we pass through the lazarette that is flanked on either side by the machinery spaces. Personally, I don't know of any boats that have layouts similar to this one, but if you do, let me know in the comments. As already mentioned, the standard engine configuration is for two Volvo Penta IPS 1350S engines. There is an option to instead have twin MAN V8 1300s. When it comes to the boat's range, then if you decide to cruise along at 20 knots, you can expect an impressive range at that speed of around 1,000 nautical miles. However, drop the speed to a respectable 10 knots and that range increases to 3,000 nautical miles. 
However, if like me, you're happy to cruise along at eight knots when undertaking long distance voyages, it'll be interesting to know what the range is. I'd be surprised if it was under 4,000 nautical miles, but of course, don't quote me on that. Her draft with IPS drives is 1.5 meters, which is four feet and 11 inches. Grand Banks do also offer a shaft drive version of the 85 if you prefer it. What is your preferred option and why? Let me know in the comments below. Now that we've finished having a look around the interior of the boat and of course the engine rooms, let's head up onto the upper deck and have a walk around up there. At the end of this video, I've got some really exciting news. Of course, because this was filmed at a boat show, we are not going to be on a sea trial today. So I cannot relay any first-hand information to you when it comes to her sea keeping and performance handling characteristics. However, you get the sense when walking around this boat, thanks to the non-slip surface and high guardrails, that's moving around up here when navigating through big seas will not be a problem. I like the fact that the bulwarks on this boat are relatively low in height. The GB85 is a sleek vessel and any surface water that lands on the deck when you are punching through big seas will quickly run off the deck. The hull of the 85 is built using a foam cord e-glass laminate and vinylista resin, while the deck and superstructure are carbon fibre. It is a clever combination that keeps the centre of gravity down and means that this motor yacht displaces less than 50 tonnes. But even more significant than that is the new Grand Banks hull shape, which Mark Richards pioneered at Palm Beach Yachts. Described as a V-warp, it combines the hard chines and V-sections of a powerboat planing hull with the rocker and barely immersed transom of a sailboat, with a skeg along the centreline aft, just deep enough and no more for directional stability. The dead rise angle of the hull aft is 5.5 degrees. There is a fine entry at the bow and some concave flare in the bottom panels forward to smooth the hull's passage through the chop. If you're interested in a Grand Bangs 85, then you can expect to pay around 9 million euros, excluding VAT. Thanks for watching, and I've got some really exciting news. Many of you probably have already heard about Motor Yacht Astra, an exceptional explorer yacht that recently carried out a voyage around Antarctica. Well, next week I'll be flying out to Spain to go aboard this legendary explorer yacht, and I can't wait to share the footage with you. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that video. If you'd like to stay up to date on how the trip's going and get some exclusive content once I'm on board Astra, then make sure you come and find me on Instagram. I'll leave a link in the video description. And remember, if you have got access to a boat that you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then make sure you send me an email. I'll leave my contact details again in the video description. If you're still watching at this point, then I'd really appreciate it if you gave the video a like because it means that more people on YouTube will get to see it. Also, don't forget to check out my other videos. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.